code and media are permissionless leverage they are the leverage behind the newly rich because you can create software and media that works for you while you sleep from the apple vision pro that is taking over the internet to every single app on your phone from the algorithm that suggests you banger song on spotify to the ai that is going to take over everyone's job all of them are made with code Now it's not new information that coding is one of the if not the most valuable skill to have in this modern age and yet tech companies are finding it really hard to get good students who are really good at coding who can actually solve problems with their code and the blame goes to two things one is the outdated curriculums that is used to teach coding in colleges and secondly the very common traps that most people fall into when they try to learn coding by themselves hi My name is Sanko and I have been coding for more than 6 years now. I did my BTech in AI, I did my internship in software and I am currently working a full-time job as a software engineer as well. And everything that I've learned over the 6 plus years, I've learned it all by myself with free resources on the internet. And if you want to do that exact same thing, in today's video we're going to break down everything about how you can start coding if you have zero idea about it, if you're a complete beginner. Now the first question that I always get is not very technical. The first question is what are the prerequisites? So what do I need to know? What device do I need to have? How much time do I need to give? Let's tackle them one by one. What do you need to know as there are not many prerequisites there are still some. You need to have a basic idea of like basic math and conditional statements and logics. Now before you ask me no you're not going to need complex mathematical concepts like calculus like algebra or like higher algebra like linear algebra determinants matrices all of these things you're not going to need unless you're going into hardcore machine learning and ai then you're going to need all of these probability and everything everything that i mentioned high level math you're going to need in ai but other than that if you're trying to go into software development web development or any of that you're not going to need any of these things mostly the second question about which type of device do you want any laptop any phone can work but again starting to code on a phone is really tough because the small screen you don't really have a keyboard you can do it but agar tumhare paas upay hai to buy even a 20 25000 ka laptop just get it and start coding because any laptop that is available on the market no matter how cheap it is is good enough to start coding now before i come to question number 3 about how many hours you should give every day to coding let's talk about the other two very technical question that are related to directly to coding that most people ask is number one the most asked question i am pretty sure is which programming language should i start with and number two is which platforms do i use to learn should i buy a course should i go to coursera should i go to udemy should i go to youtube or i don't know what should i follow and to tackle all of that let's just take the first question down first which programming language should you start with very easy answer is that it depends or it doesn't matter if you just want to get into dsa right if you just want to become a software engineer you want to get very good at data structures and algorithms and coding fundamentals and uh, concepts like object oriented programming and all of these things it does not really matter as long as you are choosing one of the popular languages you can go and start with c++ python java javascript or even like c sharp ruby anything you want anything that is popular anything that you have heard of maybe other than c you can start off with so i think the main underlying question that you should be asking here is what is your motive behind learning to code it is just to learn dsa and land a job is it to learn web development and land a job it is to learn front end development specifically to land a job is it to do more research i don't know and so you have to have a very good idea of what do you want to do even if you do not have it start with a generic language like c++ javascript java or python start with a very popular generalized language so that you can get into other streams after you have figured it out a little bit after you have figured it out a little bit after you have gotten a sense of what coding is like and whether if you like it at all and you know because this is the first question that people ask when they want to learn to code people waste an absurd amount of time on this particular question when it is very very pointless it's like asking bro i want to learn how to sing but which language do i learn in because think about it if your pitch modulation and everything is very good in one particular language you don't really need to understand another language to do the same things in that language and it is very similar for programming because you are ultimately going to learn what are the things that work what are the structures what are the algorithms how things work and what are the concepts what are the things that can be used together to make something you're not going to remember the syntaxes as much as school might tell you to remember the syntaxes 
nobody remembers them even i am a software engineer and i don't remember most of the syntaxes that i do not use on a every day basis how will i get those syntaxes though i would use chat gpt google stack overflow or any other documentation just like that and within a minute i'll have all the syntax that i need what i need to understand as a developer is how to do things to understand the logic of coding now one of the proest tip that i can give about making your whole code learning to code process a lot lot faster is to hold back on watching tutorials and actually read much more documentations because think about it you want to learn python you want to learn some node js or something like that well guess what people who have made those technologies people who have made python has actually written through lines and chapters of documentation so you can read through them and actually understand what is going on and how you can implement things how you can use them so if you can actually get good at reading documentation and finding things in documentation you will get things done a lot lot faster than anyone who is going to youtube for every problem they face while coding and while on this journey you will be visiting new websites downloading new assets and getting a lot of new emails from different platforms and Internet is not a safe place. If you're not cautious at every single step of the way, you will either be doxxed or your PC will be infected or your privacy will be breached in no time. And that is where today's sponsor of the video comes in, presenting SquareX, your one-stop solution for all types of internet security. Are you scared of leaving traces on the internet? SquareX provides you with a disposable browser that auto deletes your history and also lets you anonymously browse the internet from any location in the world. Now we are all familiar with email scams. You will get a very intriguing email when you click on the file that is attached to the email. It will turn out to be a malware which will completely destroy your PC at the very least. There are two things that SquareX provides to combat this. Number one is a disposable email that you can use to fill out forms or any assets or platforms that you do not directly trust. It will eliminate spam, block unwanted ads, and if you still, after all of this, get a shady email, you can use the SquareX disposable file viewer to. open the attached file without harming your pc at all and on top of all of this queries can be very easily integrated into your browser to detect and mitigate online threats protect you against malicious websites files and networks so click on the first link in the description then you can install squarex into your browser and be fearless online now the second question that we were talking about was which platform do i use there are millions if not tens of millions of platforms on the internet which are teaching you to code and again blatant you want the short answer any platform is good none of the platforms are teaching you wrong none of the platforms are teaching you bad because let's be honest most of them are copy paste there are a few good platforms and the other platforms are the rip offs of those few good platforms so anything you pick on the market unless you are paying for it then there is a different level of uh, value that you should look for but if you're not paying for it any free platform is good But if you have a particular goal in mind and you still want me to recommend something, for DSA I would recommend Lead Code. It is the most popular universal DSA practicing platform, and almost everyone uses it. If you want to learn web development, you can watch any of the four, five hours, even ten hours ka videos that are on YouTube on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. To begin, that is good, more than good enough. If you want to spend some money to have a more structured outcome. you can take some 500 400 rupees course from udemy that is one boot camp i remember i guess it's done by angela yu you guys can check it out if i find the link i'll leave it in the description you guys can check it out other than that if you want to learn something like python you can go to this youtube channel called sentex i learned python from that channel now this guy is not a typical tutorial channel he will teach you everything really really fast only the things that you need to know and he will teach you things through projects he will start making things right off the bat and if you follow along with him if you can even follow along with him you will learn like 10x faster than any other tutorial any other course that is available on the internet but what if you are already in college and you want to learn this thing about coding all by yourself without investing any money well the third question we mentioned at the start of the video is how much time should you give to coding every single day now honest answer it depends it can be 2 hours 3 hours or even 30 minutes even if you give the absolute bare minimum of 30 to 45 minutes to 1 hour every single day i can tell you you will have a very good understanding of the absolute fundamentals of coding of flows conditions and functions within a month so that is a very good point to start off with but again if you're looking for a particular road map to learn coding or dsa I'm not going to waste my time making one I'm not going to waste your time just to reiterate everything that is already available on the internet. One of the most essential skills to develop as a developer is to google really well. So 
any road map that you find on the internet is legit it is very good to start off with so just so just do not waste time thinking about which road map which platform which language pick something and get started but if you're still confused about which platform to take for which part and you want an all-rounder platform that can give you everything very top-notch you should definitely check out geek for geeks i'm not sponsored by them but it is the probably the most popular coding website in india because they have everything very well maintained and it is very easy and very effective to learn anything about coding that you want to learn this is very important to understand the roadmap will only take you so far the biggest problem the biggest lack in everyone's resume that is holding them back from landing a good job is the lack of good projects students will often just spend their whole time in learning concepts and consuming information but never putting them to use now think about this from a company perspective i am the employer i do not give a shit about if you know how to declare a protected variable in python what i give a shit about is if you know what it is if you know why it is and how you can use it to solve a problem but regardless most students will just be lazy and they will just keep watching tutorials and never make any projects fair placement se do hafte pehle they will copy paste some projects from the internet and as an employer i call this whole phenomenon tutorial paralysis or tutorial rabbit hole because once you go into it it is really hard to get out of it but there is a remedy thankfully but thankfully there is a remedy that is learning via doing it is like to learn a cover drive you do not read books and you don't watch videos about cover drive instead of doing that you actually grab the bat and get into the field and try playing some balls outside the off stump and even if you miss a lot of balls you edge a few balls after some time you will get really good at playing a cover drive much better than someone who has watched all the virat kohli cover drives that he has ever played in his life but the very next question that is coming up right now in your mind is which project should i make how do i find project ideas and to that i say everything is available on the internet go out there on the internet find a project that impresses you that tum khud dekh ke socho ki bhai ye kya must cheez bana hai and i want to make this once you have that i want to make this from the inside you can literally understand the project about the architecture about the tech stack and all the things that they have used you go and learn them and you try to replicate that whole project if you are stuck anywhere you can go look at the code you can go and look at google chat gpt and all the different things but through this whole process now you will understand every single little problem every single little part of that whole system and that is probably the second best way to do it the best way to do it that employers absolutely love is when you solve an actual problem in your life or someone else's life I'll give you an example that I have given numerous of times that I wanted to convert my playlists from YouTube to Spotify and there was no app or software or website that was doing it when I wanted to do it it was I think in 2020 so I looked through APIs I looked through how to integrate them API calls authentication and all of those things I looked through them in like 3 to 4 days and I could finally make that a reality something that I wanted to make to solve a particular problem that i had in my life and as an employer what more do you want this guy who is sitting in front of you has solved a real problem that he had in his life with code that is exactly what you need in your developer but all this is just like the half of the puzzle to actually make a recruiter fall in love with you the other half is about consistent time and effort being put in and i am absolutely sure that 95 to 98% of you people watching are not even going to try to code for more than 7 days you're going to quit within 7 days and that is a very good thing for people who are actually serious because everyone else is quitting if you just keep putting in the consistent effort day in and day out you will see it is very easy to get out of mediocrity as a programmer and actually land a good job now tracking back to what nawal javikan said code and media are permissionless leverages these are the skills of the future but maybe coding isn't your thing you want to get into media more you want to be a content creator maybe if you want to be a content creator or a media producer if that is the thing starting your own youtube channel or an instagram page and actually making it grow while you're in college is the absolute best thing absolute blessing that you can have on your life now from someone who has actually done it in college fair disclaimer that it is probably 10 times or 20 times more harder than actually learning to code and landing a job But if you still think you have got what it takes, I have made this video with three other successful college YouTubers who talk about how they started and what are their best 
tips for absolute beginners who want to get down the same path and become a content creator while being in college.